Dr. Andrew Foster, Ghana and the Roots of Deaf Education in Africa, begins with a story about one man who served 30 years in Africa, founding amongst the first 32 schools for the deaf across the continent. The first of which was piloted in Ghana in 1957, the year of independence. Foster's Prototype Mission School The first school for the deaf in Africa, known to have used sign language, formed a template which the government of Ghana rolled out into all regions of the country. and which Foster replicated in 12 more African nations. Foster's pioneering work with Ghanaians, such as Dr. Seth Lawrence Tete Oklu, laid Africa's sign language and deaf education infrastructure, which endures to this day. But who was Foster? What was his motivation? What was the impact of his work? How was his work sustained? These are the questions we will explore in our presentation. First, who was Foster? Foster was born on June 27, 1925, in the United States of America, in the state of Alabama. Though Foster was born hearing, he contracted spinal meningitis, common cause of hearing loss in the U.S. and Africa, at age 11. As a result, he lost hearing and became deaf, but after he had already acquired speech and language. Deafness did not obstruct Foster's academic ambition. He went on to earn his bachelor's and two master's degree before receiving an honorary doctorate degree from Gallaudet University in Washington, D.C. By 1956, Foster founded Christian Mission for Deaf Africans, CMDA. In 1957, he mobilized resources through CMDA to bring Christianity to the deaf in Africa. His first port of call was Liberia. On arrival in Monrovia, the capital of Liberia, he met and proposed to work with the deaf persons he found idling along roads and around beaches. However, after approximately three weeks in Monrovia, Foster determined working conditions were not favorable, so moved his mission onward. To Accra, from where he would eventually found Ghana Mission School for the Deaf. In regards to sign language, how and where did Foster first learn it? Foster learned American Sign Language, ASL, between age 11 and 17, while enrolled at Alabama School for the Negro Deaf. Unlike many schools for the deaf in the United States which adhered strictly to oral methods, not sign language, Alabama School for the Negro Deaf used ASL to teach deaf children. Foster would have graduated from deaf school with ASL fluency, which he expanded and strengthened per regular attendance at Pembroke Bethany Church. a church which included deaf African Americans and Gallaudet University. How did Foster impact Africa? To access Foster's work in Ghana, we will first explore the baseline state of education and sign language for the deaf prior to his arrival. Contrary to common belief, sign language is not an international language. 
and Foster did not introduce sign language to Africa. As such, scholars have identified numerous indigenous mother tongue sign languages used by deaf communities in West Africa before Foster's introduction of ASL on the continent. Examples of indigenous sign languages used in West Africa include Adam Roby Sign Language in Ghana, Magana Sign Language in Northern Nigeria, Malian Sign Language in Bamako and Sign Language of Buakako used in Ivory Coast. Specific to Ghana, we know that Adam Robe Sign Language was isolated to and not used outside Adam Robe Village. By 1957, Africa had a handful of pioneering schools for the deaf in Nigeria, South Africa, and Eritrea. But none were known to have used sign language at that time. At the time Ghana was positioning itself as a geopolitical leader in Africa, self-determination and independence, but did not yet have a school for the deaf and or a widely used sign language system until Foster appeared on the scene. On Foster's 1957 arrival in Ghana, he surveyed conditions for the deaf in Accra and determined that they lack access to faith, his primary concern, and education. Of course, sign language to deliver them both. He sprang in action in his first months, drafting and submitting a deaf education proposal to the government of Ghana's Ministry of Education and Social Welfare and the Accra City Council. As neither agency initially approved the proposal, Foster shrewdly took the idea public, presenting to an open public forum in Osu, near where he was hosted by two deaf brothers. More than 800 persons were said to have attended and were amused by the sight of Foster's presenting in the sign language of the deaf, a demonstration never seen before. Foster's event in Osu got the attention of the Presbyterian Church, who also championed education in their school for the blind in the Kropon. Because the Presbyterian Church already had a number of schools in Osu, they offered Foster use of their facilities facility at no cost. It was there that Foster experimented with education and sign language for the deaf in Ghana. In the words of Mary Addo, teacher and sign language interpreter who served with Foster, Foster found an unknown number of deaf children were illiterate, isolated and languageless. On July 11, 1957, Foster observed that, as far as I have been able to learn, there are no such provision for the deaf in Ghana. We hope to have a small school for the deaf just as soon as possible. Foster will take action to support sign language and education for the deaf in Ghana. But as stated earlier, he faced challenges when initially presenting this idea in Ghana. Grace Amoa One of Foster's first teachers said that he started in Accra in Osu, 1957. He came to Ghana and went to the Ministry of Education. He told them he wanted to start a school for the deaf, but they said, Oh, we have few deaf children, no enough for the school. He didn't mind them because he knew they were not aware. So he went ahead and got a school for the deaf. On September 10, 1957, Foster opened Ghana Mission School for the Deaf in a borrowed classroom at Osu Presbyterian Boys Middle School, enrolling his first 13 deaf student. Dr. Seth Lawrence Tete Oklu, Ghana's first deaf teacher and PhD holder in deaf education, recalled an early encounter with Foster and a deaf student, saying that, I asked Foster to get me some job, so Foster pressed the request that I help educate the deaf people. I didn't want to become hooked with this deaf and dumb business. 
Three days later and before classes began, Foster led the 15 deaf children in singing Jesus Loves Me using signs. I was so fascinated by the manual rendition that I promptly agreed to be part of the deaf and dumb business. Elizabeth Oklu, one of Foster's first teachers, described how she and the teachers learned sign language. He showed us the signs. He would write them down. And that was our training. I was a trained teacher but didn't know the signs, how to get it across to the children. The school has started and the children had no education. They didn't even know their own names. We were giving them survival signs. You have to know the signs. Foster was not a secular humanist. He was a reverend and a missionary educator motivated by Christianity to serve deaf Africans through faith. As such, he was in the business of constructing and running mission schools for the deaf. Foster's son, Tim Foster, explained his father's dedication to the deaf in Africa, saying that, I do wish more people understood the source of my father's passion. Yes, he wanted to help fellow deaf people advance in the world of education, employment, etc. But more than that, he cared about the souls of men. A year after the start of Foster's mission for the deaf in Ghana, his hard work was paying off. By the end of 1958, over 50 children had enrolled at Ghana Mission School for the deaf, exceeding capacity at Osu Presbyterian Boys Middle School. Foster's search for a larger site brought him to Mampong Equiapim, where Chief Nana Anoba Sasraku II offered use of his house and land on a rental basis. At the same time, the Kwame Nkrumah Trust agreed to partially fund an expansion of Ghana mission schools for the deaf. In January 1959, Foster moved Ghana Mission School for the Deaf from Osu to its current site in Mampong, Equiapim, now the Senior High Technical School for the Deaf. The original sites in Osu continued to offer adult deaf education led by the teachers Foster had trained and entrusted to run that part of the mission. By 1960, government of Ghana commissioned Sir John Wilson, a blind Briton, to survey and report on the state of persons with disabilities in Ghana. nineteen sixty publication of the Wilson Commission report estimated that approximately hundred thousand Ghanaians with disability did not have access to basic services, including ten thousand children and twelve thousand deaf persons. Consequently, Wilson recommended that the government of Ghana organize to run a central special education system to meet the needs of children with disabilities, such as the deaf. Two years later, Ghanaians operationalized this idea into action. In May nineteen 62, Ghana's Ministry of Education took full ownership of and responsibility for the Ghana Mission School for the Deaf. In transferring Foster's institution from church to state, the government removed the faith-based mission title, rebranding it with the Decidedly Secular School for the Deaf. The government retained Foster as the headmaster and teacher trainer until 1965. School for the Deaf formed a sign language embedded deaf education template which the government of Ghana would replicate into all regions and Foster would replicate across the African continent. By the time Foster left the School for the Deaf in Ghana and moved over to Ibadan Mission School for the Deaf, he had enrolled more than 200 deaf children. 
with another 300 on the wait list. Three years later, that wait list swelled to 1,375 with deaf children seeking enrollment from all regions. Following advice from the Wilson Commission report, which envisioned a national special education system, the Ministry of Education responded by supporting the foster deaf education model at State School for the Deaf in 1966, Demonstration School for the Deaf. In 1967, War School for the Deaf. In 1968, Bechem School for the Deaf. In 1969, Kipko School for the Deaf. In 1970, Secondary School for the Deaf. In 1971, Voter School for the Deaf. In 1971, Kufurudia School for the Deaf. 1975, Kibi School for the Deaf. In 1975, Ashanti School for the Deaf. In 1977, Sevelugu School for the Deaf. In 1978, Ngbeogo School for the Deaf. In 1986. While the government of Ghana was replicating Foster's deaf education and sign language model across all regions, he rolled it out across 11 more African nations. Establishing 30 more schools for the deaf. He would often overland these journeys in his trademark VW van, which he drove with deaf passengers. He placed a deaf driver notice and mission school for the deaf name and logo on the van, alerting African police and military of their presence. By 1960, Foster conducted exploratory visits from Ghana into Nigeria to establish a second mission school for the deaf, which he named Ibadan Mission School for the Deaf. This institution in Nigeria would form the hub of his African Deaf Education and Sign Language Training Center. During a 10-year span between 1972 and 1982, Foster focused his deaf education expansion across West Africa and Central Africa, opening school for the deaf in countries such as Burkina Faso, Chad, Senegal, Democratic Republic of Congo and Burundi. He recruited a cohort of deaf Ethiopians who joined his trainings at his center in Ibadan. Later returning them to Addis Ababa to run Ethiopia's deaf education system. By 1987, Foster had founded 32 of Africa's first school for the deaf. How did Foster, as one man, manage 32 schools for the deaf in 13 different countries? Foster recruited talented deaf and hearing Africans from their respective countries, trained them at Ibadan School for the Deaf, then hired them to run the schools for their deaf in their home countries. How did Foster fund all the trainings at Ibadan Mission School for the Deaf, as well as the 32 schools for the deaf? Foster successfully utilized a number of strategies which mobilized resources to sustain the growth of his African deaf education infrastructure. Early on in Ghana and Ivory Coast, he transferred his mission school for the deaf to host country governments who demonstrated political will and financial capacity to deliver deaf education. In all other countries, his Christian mission for the deaf African raised funds to partially or fully run the school for the deaf, in addition to the ongoing training in Ibadan.
What was Foster's impact in sign language in Ghana? We put this question to our friends in Ghana, National Association of the Deaf, GNAD, who answered that Foster used American Sign Language to begin teaching the many deaf people he found in Ghana. Ghana Sign Language, GSL, contains various signs that are unique to Ghana only. In Ghana, Foster introduced the manual one-hand finger spelling alphabet often shared on cards which were locally printed in Accra. He also presented it in class and teacher trainings as illustrated by this deaf Ghanaian artist. Over time and repeated exposure, Foster's first teachers and deaf students gradually learned and spread the fingerspelling alphabet through his formation network of mission schools for the deaf. The process of learning Foster Sign Language was detailed by Godfrey Amenume, an alumni of Ghana Mission School for the Deaf. Godfrey confided, I didn't know any sign language. It was new to me. It was the deaf I encountered who knew the signs for things like car and showed me until I understood and was okay. In the classroom, we started with cut pictures of things. We would be shown a cut, then presented with a sign cut. We did this until the concept became clear and I felt my mind expanding. After introducing the finger spelling alphabet to the deaf and their teachers in Ghana, we see it spread through his network of mission schools all the way to the Eastern Democratic Republic of the Congo in Bukavu. Musa Nyatieye. One of Foster's first students in Ghana recounts that the first time I went to the school, Ghana Mission School for the Deaf, it was over there in Osu. Firstly, Foster taught me how to fingerspell. He started with the letters in the manual alphabet, A, B, C, etc. Then he drew different types of animals and people to show me. He would draw a hen and then finger spell H-E-N. He moved on and on like that for three months. Until we had an exam, I passed. Africans who knew Foster detailed how he taught teachers and students his sign language and finger spelling as he moved across Africa. But Foster didn't introduce sign language to Africa because numerous deaf communities developed their own local sign languages. So, what happened when Foster came into contact with Africa's indigenous sign languages? Casta, a deaf scholar who examined this question in Ghana, determined that the deaf people in Adam Robe depicted their interaction with Reverend Foster as a mutual exchange. They taught him Adam Robe sign language and he taught them ASL, a mutual exchange of signs. Kamei, a linguistic professor who researched sign language in West Africa, described how colonial languages also intersected through deaf communities, writing that Lang de Sing Franco African, LSFA, is a generic term of sign language widely used among French speaking West and Central Africa, with two distinct characteristics long sign from ASL and influence based on spoken or written French. Foster's work led to linguistic collisions in places like Mali where scholars ascertained that the deaf community in Bumako is shifting away from Malian sign language to ASL or LSFA. The spread of ASL in Mali is part of a larger picture in which sign language is used in deaf education in virtually all countries in West and Central Africa. We can see the influence of ASL more or less followed the advance of Foster's mission school for the deaf across Africa. We will next summarize how Foster's early collaborations in Ghana laid a deaf education and sign language infrastructure across Africa, which persons, the majority of who know little to nothing about the history, enjoy to this day. Our baseline begins in the pre-independence early 1950s where just a few deaf schools were concentrated in North Africa and apartheid South Africa. 
none of which used sign language. While Nigeria and Eritrea each got a school for the deaf by the mid-1950s, neither used sign language. On the other side of the Atlantic, Foster was preparing his deaf education mission for the United States. In the United States, Foster completed his formal education and founded Christian Mission for Deaf Africans. In 1957, Foster came to Accra via Monrovia, from where he successfully partnered with deaf and hearing Ghanaians to launch Ghana Mission School for Deaf, the first school for the deaf in Africa known to have used sign language. The mission school formed a deaf education template and created a sign language system which the government of Ghana spread across all regions. While Foster replicated and scaled it into 12 more countries to found 31 more schools for the deaf, 13 countries and 32 schools in total. Tragically, Foster died in an air accident over Rwanda on December 3, 1987. Per Foster's wishes, his body was buried and remains in a remote mass grave outside Jisenyi, Rwanda, near the airplane crash site. Emmanuel Ilabo, a deaf Nigerian who Foster trained to run the Ibadan School for the Deaf, since rebranded Christian Mission School for the Deaf, concluded that, although Andrew left Ghana to establish more schools in Nigeria and other countries, it is of paramount importance to recognize the fact that Ghana served as the starting point of Andrew's work and served as a testing ground for the various methods and theories that he had propounded before coming to Africa for use. Though Foster passed on in 1987, 30 years after his arrival in Ghana, the legacy of his life and work lives on. Ghana adapted and applied the guiding deaf education philosophies and sign language which Foster introduced. Even physical infrastructure, such as the land and house which the chief rented out to Ghana Mission School for Deaf, remains remarkably unchanged. On reviewing Dr. Andrew Foster, Ghana and the Roots of Deaf Education in Africa, Daniel Nswa, teacher from the School of the Deaf in Savelugu, remarked that deaf education in Ghana is as old as Ghana itself. In welcoming and collaborating with Foster Ghana, led the way to expand a deaf education and sign language across much of Africa. Foster and Ghanaians came together to make timely and significant contribution to the deaf education and sign language system, which many deaf Africans, even those who do not know much about Foster, enjoy to this day. If these are Foster's contributions, what are yours? What contribution can you make to keep Ghana at the forefront of deaf education? education and sign language advocacy in Africa. We close our discussion about Dr. Andrew Foster, Ghana and the roots of deaf education in Africa with parting words from Dr. Seth Lawrence Tete Oklu, himself a prominent deaf Ghanaian who founded State School for the Deaf, Ghana Second Deaf School. Scholars widely credit Dr. Oklu with helping to establish and sustain Ghana Mission School for the Deaf during its first tender years. Dr. Oklu advises us that the problems of education and training the deaf in Ghana are many and varied, but by no means insurmountable. They need to be recognized for what they are and concerted, well-planned efforts made to solve them. They have been mastered elsewhere, and Africa can master them too. <laughs>